This is the tutorial for showing you how to make a staff or clubs. Step one is to measure your length of your pole. If you measure it like such, you're going to drill a hole at the base of the cage that you slide over and just one inch below the top. So just go one down and drill a hole right there because you want to leave room for your lid to go on. Once you get those holes drilled, you can go ahead and slide the cage on with the base of course and now just the bottom one you're gonna put the wire through and make that fan effect then after you get the bottom one on there it should kinda it'll be attached right here and just be rattling around okay that's where you do your internal hardware cloth okay you have to do it around this and after you do your internal hardware cloth then you can cut the center out of some of the screens and slide those all the way down to make the bottom screen mesh or hardware cloth section and then you're ready for the exterior and you do the exterior just like the poi. Right here I put the wire through those and I bent them out and it kind of creates this little fan effect as you as you connect it to the to the outside of the cage and it's the same way you wrap the wire around you're gonna have to find a good nice piece of internal cage and then wrap it around and secure it on there nice and neat. Um, with the fan effect it holds it from twisting. It keeps it not only from rattling around but also it keeps the cage from twisting on there. So I think that design works well and uh, this is the design that I use on the end of my staff. When you drill the one towards the top you want to leave a little bit of that post sticking up right there okay? because your lid's going to go on that. How the lid works is you just cut a hole in the center about the circumference of the post that's sticking out, your tubing that you have going through the center of it and when it goes on there it's almost like a push nut. Like, look at this. It's hard to come off just because of the little pieces sticking on there get bent up and when you try and pull it off it's it's grabbing on the metal, it's not, it's not wanting to come off. So it works as a really great ca uh, lid for this thing. You just push it all the way down. These screens will hold any material that's going to fly out. If you put some extra chicken wire on top, it'll hold those screens from coming out any further. And it's pretty simple. You just wrap the chicken wire around the top and they just bend the pieces inside of the cage that we have made. As you can see in this clip that I'm going to show right now, I've had the dragon's dust. I had a complete cloud come and hit me in the face and a lot of the dragon's dust even went down my sweatshirt and my shirt that I was wearing. I remember during the performance that when that happened, I had stopped the staff and I had all this, you know, these embers on me. It's only for a short while. And once the song started back up, I started spinning again. I could feel them go out immediately. They didn't leave like big crazy burns like uh, you know, uh, the, the devil's popcorn will. I like this type of hoodie during practice because it's these little snap buttons. Okay? And if anything goes wrong, I can just go whoosh. Smells like campfire. I've done this in pretty much what you see me wearing right now, just a t-shirt, and I was, uh, except I do recommend the safety glasses. Sunglasses or safety glasses. And the other one I use, this is the one that I'm going to recommend to you guys, just because I know you all get a little bit crazier out there. Goggles. Goggles. Safety equipment is important. I recommend cotton jeans, like denim jeans would be fine, with shoes that you don't want to damage. A piece of charcoal land on my shoe, and as you can see, it ate a hole through the mesh. There's another part where... The charcoal landed right here. And on my other shoes, I have burnt my laces. It burnt through like half of one of my laces. So just be careful of where this stuff is going. Uh, something I recommend is a spray bottle. Whoa! <laughs> dude, you got shit all over you, dude. His <laughs> headlight's still on. Yeah! <laughs> totally need to get you down. We spray ourselves before we go out and we play with the charcoal. Uh, just to be damp. As far as breathing any of the dust that you're knocking up into the air, any of the sparks, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about it. Uh, it's similar to fire breathing, where if you're blowing out a fireball, you know, 
right after you blow that fireball out, you're not going to inhale any of that mist, right? It's about breathing control. So if you have a huge shower of sparks around you, uh, don't, don't breathe in. You know, hold your breath until those sparks settle. If you're still worried about breathing them in, just take a bandana and wrap it around your face, and you should be just fine, you know, covering your nose and your mouth. The only injuries I've ever gotten from Charcoal Poi thus far is... I think just the pieces of charcoal landing on you, that's probably the worst you're going to get. Uh, I do it bare hands for the most part. Uh, I do recommend gloves. I've caught one in the middle of my fingers when I was spinning the poi. I was holding on to my poi and a little spark got away and it started burning me right here and I had to, you know, flick my fingers open so that piece went away. It's silly, it burnt both sides <laughs> right where it was sitting and they're deep too. Uh, charcoal burns can be pretty intense and deep. so. I do think that the dragon's dust is a lot safer than the charcoal. Not only does the devil's popcorn cause more damage to you, but it can cause more damage to your cages and your staff or your, or your clubs, whatever you're spinning. Today I'm going to show you how to make the dragon's dust. What I use is pine shavings, so they also make make it in like aspen and uh, cedar, all kinds of other woods. Get a good hot fire going. So first things first, get that fire really smoking hot. Then you're going to need paint cans. I usually use two of them. Make sure you got a lid. Um, I use an ice pick and a hammer to poke the holes in it. Poke some holes in it like such. Ah, oh, yeah. Once you get your holes poked, then it's time to add the pine shavings. You're also going to need a screwdriver. Uh, to open the can. So I filled it up and I packed it pretty much as tight as I could get it. So now I'm going to put the lid back on it. And when you do this, I make sure that you poked enough holes because if you don't poke enough holes, uh, one time I had a lid go pew, fly off. It was kind of cool. But anyways, it'll ruin your charcoal. Pound the lid back on. And uh, ready for the next step. Last thing you need is a coat hanger. I just took a coat hanger and bent it. You could use wire as well. It's what you're going to use to scoop the can out of the fire and put it back into the fire. What I'm doing here is putting all the coals and the hot part of the fire towards the outside because I want that can to go in the middle of that. It's in the center of the fire. Now you can see that the fire has started to come out the top of it. What I'll do is I'll rotate the cans, so while that one's in there cooking, I'll have this one cooling. It's been about 45 minutes and the fire stopped coming out the top, so it's not smoking at all either. So it's kind of just sitting in there chilling, which tells me it's ready. When your dragon's dust is done in the fire and you take it out, you want to let it cool completely before you pop that top open and pour it into your bag that you hold it in. I usually double bag it so it stays in there and this is what dragon's dust looks like you should see it's more charcoal flakes than anything this is the charcoal I use for the devil's popcorn it's full circle this is the charcoal staff I'm going to show you how I prep it first of all you want to get all your dragon's dust inside of here okay via the top of it then we put the lid on, of course, once that lid's on there. Then I take a gallon bag, like such, wrap it around and zip it on up. And you take a plastic bag and you put that on and you tie it on there. Now that you tied the bag on there, you don't have to worry about your charcoal coming out of the cages before you get to a performance. You could transport it in your car or whatever and not have to worry about getting it everywhere. When we are sharing fuel sources to one another, uh, make sure you're very specific. I've taken pictures, you saw the video of the fuel sources I'm using. If you want to learn more about this effect, email me at tamefire at gmail.com or you can find me on Facebook. One of the things I'd like to see us have is a database of all the fuel sources, the workable or usable ones. I mean, literally, we're just scratching the surface of what can be done with this effect. And uh, I hope some of you guys experiment with this. I hope you take it to the next level uh, because this is some next level stuff.